no imagery here, but after Crescimbeni's death in 1728, during the election of the second <coughs> Arcadia, Custody, the schism of uh, 1711 was seen to still be a sort of <coughs> a bravina follower. This gentleman, Francesco Lorenzi, <coughs> was elected, but only after a contentious vote, which saw Giuseppe Bianchini emerge as the winner. And uh, then, as, as in our 2000 election here in the United States, then he, after a recount, he was not the winner. It was uh, Lorenzini. The results of the election went before a papal tribune, uh, and after some um, very nasty opinions that were written, uh, Lorenzini uh, uh, emerged the winner. Now, Lorenzini uh, was known for his breadth of knowledge, a, a very smart man, but he never attached himself to a patron or to an institution. He didn't publish widely, uh, which was the practice of scholars for the day. Thus, um, he was always in need of money. Uh, the worst um, custody for the Arcadia. In addition, he was a horrible record keeper. By neglect rather than by any active measure, he decimated the Arcadia's membership. So from 1728 to 43, uh, Arcadia was essentially a group of young male um, poets. They held meetings not in the Bosco Palazzo, which was left unfinished in 1726 and actually abandoned but in and around uh, Morazzini's house, which is on the Via, was on the Via Lutari, which is... Via, uh, sorry? Uh, De Lutari. Ah, Leo yeah. uh, and, and I'm actually looking for this because um, I know it's south of the Piazza Novona, right? Right next to the Cancelleria, just on the other right side of the road. Ah, that's interesting. I need to find this house. Okay, because... Um, I'm sure I, the house is still there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find it. Okay. <laughs> Um, those in this Arcadia Secunda, they met every Thursday, discussed Dante's uh, Divine Comedy, Cicero's Dialogues on Friendship, and they put on plays in an out, a nearby outdoor theater, uh, plays by Plautus and Terence. However, they did not organize uh, Olympic Games, nor hold any special meetings for elite members, nor did they publish anything, at least not under the Arcadian um, insignia. Only a handful of dignitaries were claimed in Arcadia Secunda, uh, unlike in the Prima and the Terza, and one of those being uh, Cardinal Neri Corsini, uh, who by this time had become the Cardinal Napoli to uh, Clement, uh, Clement II of Corsini. Some more, some more portraits. Now, at the tail end of the reign of uh, Clement the, the Twelfth Corsini, that is around uh, 1738, and certainly at the election of uh, the next pope, uh, Benedict XIV, Lambertini, um, in uh, 1740, the role that Arcadia had once uh, played to smooth the ruffled feathers of increasingly demanding foreign kings uh, in Rome, this role was sorely missed. Um, the war of uh, Polish succession in 1733 to about 1736 was fought partially on, Italian, on the Italian peninsula. It pitted the imperial Habsburg against the Spanish Bourbon powers, um, and uh, eventually saw uh, Charles Bourbon, Carlo Bourbon, as the uh, king of Naples in Sicily, uh, Vasi's king. And I suspect we'll hear more about that from uh, John Moore in a few minutes. During Arcadia, Arcadia Secunda, the Pope signed a concordant with Spain and Naples, essentially ceding all types of um, rights to them. Therefore, um, in 1743, at Lorenzini's uh, early death, the papacies intervened to sway the, the election of the custody of Arcadia Terza. Uh, Benedict XIV took advantage of the fact that no membership lists had been uh, kept for decades, for a decade and a bit more, and he asked the newly appointed Cardinal uh, Passanet there on the right, um, an interesting choice, uh, to choose an elected body in Arcadia. 50 members acted from Arcadia Prima, 50 from Arcadia Sun, because um, Secundo, and they chose this gentleman. I'm, again, I'm sorry I don't have an image. Michel Moret. Not much is known about Moret, but he became a more diplomatic version of Crescent Benny. His Arcadia Terza was a blend of what was best of the first uh, two Arcadia. He managed to foster the talented poets. Uh, and, be a, and to be serious about literary reform, 
while also reinstating the great public events and political activity of the Arcadi, he also restored and then used the Bosco Parasium. And so, um, on to Vasi. His printmaking talents caught the attention of the men who oversaw Arcadia Secunda, Corsini, uh, Botari, uh, Botari is uh, Corsini's librarian, as well as Giuseppe Bianchini. Um, and he received some seminal commissions from them. And in a revitalized Arcadia Terza, Vasi found a number of patrons, as we, uh, you know, if you've read the, the catalog entry by Professor Harper, um, uh, a number of patrons for his multi-volume Magnificenza. Now, um, it cannot be certain that Vasi was a member of uh, Arcadia Secunda. For certain, he was a member of Arcadia Terza. He published using his Arcadian pseudonym. Uh, just, he just took a pastoral name, not a, a second name, not a destination name, um, uh, Dionysio, which is, um, I guess more could be said about that. Um, <laughs> and he wrote poetry. Again, I thank Professor Harper for pointing out to me that volume one of the Magnificenza, there's actually a poem dedicated to the King of Naples. Although uh, uh, Vasi did not produce poetry for the official Arcadian publications, uh, nor did he, he ever get to really use, he, he could put his name on the um, frontispiece of his uh, text, but he couldn't use the official Arcadian seal. Now, in 1738, Clement uh, XII, Corsini, purchased the De Rossi publishing house and created the Calcografia Camerale, the papal printing house. Um, this act, I believe often underestimated in the art historical literature, helped catapult the art of printmaking into a practice um, on, on, of some par with the other arts of design. The graphic output of the Calcografia um, acted as a kind of portable, portable form of um, propaganda in Papal Rome, mu much like the architectural and painting projects of the past century. Now, um, uh, I might, after this conference, actually go back to this paragraph and rewrite it and soften it just a bit. But I do think that the, um, again, the, the establishment of the Calcografia Camerale um, was highly significant for the art of printmaking um, after 1738. The director of the Calcografia, most likely on the advice of Cardinal Neri Corsini and Botari, the librarian, commissioned Vasi to produce the dute of the great architectural projects completed by early 18th century. These included prints of Luigi Vandatelli's uh, Port of Ancona, a terribly important project, um, which uh, was intended to bring a financial life uh, to the Papal States on the east, east coast of Italy, um, but still within the Papal States, revitalizing what had been uh, solely a military base uh, into a commercial port city. And the, you know, the seminal design there, the Lazzaretto, is a house hospital or hospice for the quarantine, um, and that features large in this uh, print. Um, and they, this was one of the prints that uh, they, uh, the Camerale commissioned from Vasi. But it included all the, oh, I'm sorry, and then, and then he returns to this project, the Ancona, uh, and, um, and Van Vitale, who was so beloved by the Arcadians, um, he returns to this in a print, a uh, much larger print of later, um, of the 60s, um, late 60s, I believe, 70s. Don't quote me on that. But again, you see, I call it, I'm in the smaller, smaller views of it. But in this group, again, in the late 30s, early 40s, he also produces, uh, again, Alessandro Galilei's Facado, San Giovanni Laterano, we've seen this, um, the Trevi Fountain, although I'm a little bit concerned about that uh, date of issue as uh, published 1744. Um, Spanish Steps, again, these are all favorites by this time. And um, they were a, a huge uh, commercial success, and I'm relying here on the work of Paolo Cohen. But when Benedict XIV uh, uh, assumed the papal office in 1740, the series was reshuffled and added to, and then they were never bound, as I don't believe they were ever bound together. Uh, and they included um, Ferdinand Fugas, Vasado, Santa Maria Maggiore. And, and, and these, you know, obviously these. Oh, oh, of which there is a, a, a copy at the top of the stairs. With this, Fazi then fell into commissions by two of the leading scholars of the day, both Arcadian, Giovanni Battista uh, Gaetano Botari, Giuseppe Bianchini, for two of the most important um, 
culturally important print projects of the 1740s and 50s, one highlighting the collections of artworks from the ancient world, the Musée di Capolini, Capolini Museum, and the other of the early Christian world. Um, this last part of the talk, then, I will describe what Basi did for these men, and then set up the idea, um, kind of vague idea, but um, I think provable, that their way of thinking and organizing, these Botari and Bianchini's way of thinking and organizing cultural information had an impact on um, the organization of Vasi's Magnificenza. Botari, here in a drawing by, by again, the, the director of the Calcografia of Scampiglia, um, Botari was a brilliant, uh, sometimes sharp tongue, and um, impatient character, uh, about whom Heather Minor has uh, written substantially. He had keen ideas regarding the benefits of our patronage for the state, and he became, he was a part of the inner circle of the Corsini Pope, and then became part of the inner circle of the of court of um, Benedict XIV. And um, he also became a curator, I've used that term, curator of the newly formed uh, Capitoline Museum collections, and was responsible for organizing them in a didactic <coughs> manner. Um, he published them in, um, the results in four volumes, Mosei Capolini, <coughs> and, and Volume 1, Volume 2, uh, Frontispiece. Volume 1 was issued in 1741 and presented 40 busts of classical philosophers, orators, poets, uh, from the Greek to the Roman, in a chronological order. Volume 2, issued in 40, 1748, uh, about the same number of busts of emperors and empresses in Augustus, the 4th century emperors, again, in chronological order. Volume 3, issued in 1755, of uh, full, full-size statues. And again, there's a kind of inherent chronology to how they were ordered. And then the last volume actually published after Botari's death was um, of bas-reliefs. Um, and these included, or they ended with uh, essentially the early Christian sarcophagi. Um, this, um, let's see, there's a major point here I want to make. Uh, uh, this organization was t intended, you know, again, things, things uh, organized both uh, typologically and chronologically, and it was intended in, to assert papal authority, to kind of prove the papal ownership of illustrious and uh, powerful roots. Um, now, just for Botati's Musee Capolini, Vasari produced various frontispiece and introductory prints. Not, not the prints um, of the collection itself, but just this, the bust of Augustus. Um, I just have here uh, volume one, where he, he did the portone, the, the major door of the Capitoline Museum, and then you can see in volume two, he's actually got the Capitoline Hill, which looks very much like the view we see in the Magnificenza, a bit expanded. Um, these might seem inconsequential images, but they speak <coughs> of an association with these new, large, multi-volume, um, organ you know, organizing new cultural projects. Bazi then worked, um, I'm sorry, so this is also from the Bose Capolini, the line three large statues. Bazi then worked for uh, Botani's partner in this enterprise, Giuseppe Bianchini, who had the equally important task of collecting and, um, and assembling early Christian artifacts into a museum, and um, at least into a paper museum. Uh, Giuseppe Bianchini, here he is, uh, you might remember, was, um, he was the second custody in the same way that Al Gore was the uh, president of the United States. He was a pro prolific polymath, and uh, much of his work was to complete that of his uncle Francesco, um, dies in 1729. They were intellectual twins. One of their uh, common, enormous projects was an illustrated universal history, both secular and sacred history, using archaeological artifacts as proof of that history. The hardest part of the project, the ecclesiastical history, basically the history of the early popes, for which there was very little evidence, uh, um, fell to Giuseppe, Giuseppe Bianchini. 